Welcome to the Art of Quantum Healing, where we speak about trauma, mental health and healing. I am your host, Lisa Nadler, and I'm thrilled to have you come into my energetic field. In this podcast, I will be sharing my own personal experiences to guide, teach and help pave the way. We'll also be welcoming so many other divine souls who have overcome trauma and found happiness, health, wealth and next level abundance through mind, body and soul connection. My mission is to help women high vibe and thrive with inner peace, passion and purpose. In this beautiful episode, I have the divine Sharon, who is here to really share a lot about the different ways that she has. She's actually got some healing modalities that I'm excited to hear about. So welcome, Sharon. Thank you for having me, Lisa. So good to have you here. So I'm just going to read a little bit about Sharon and so you can just sort of like get a get a glimpse of, of the of the little bit of what how she's traveled. Um, Sharon is a passionate speaker and w- women's wellness expert. She shows professionals and entrepreneur women how to transform their relationship with themselves so they can enjoy more clarity, have a great sense of self-worth and self-belief, significant improvement, wellness, and deeper connections with themselves and those around them beautiful. Sharon is based in Sydney, Australia. Oh, like me. Yay. Well, not Sydney, I'm Brisbane, sort of. (laughs) And this is, I'm really excited about this, has developed her method of creating full body wellness over the past 10 years as she experienced firsthand the highs and lows of maintaining her physical and mental health whilst working full time, running multiple businesses and having a social life. Not sure how you fit in your show today. Well done. (laughs) Welcome, 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 beautiful. (laughs) Thank you. It's so good to be here with you. It's so good to have you. Really, really is. I'm excited. Like I was reading um, the first thing that you put through and it was like, oh, I haven't heard of that. I'm really interested in that and how you use the hot massage and oh, I can't wait to get into it. I really can't. First of all, I would love you to share with my divine audience and of course with your own. (laughs) all about your story tell me a little bit about how you started you know what what, was the start of it and how you actually transformed it and came out to really be where you are right now yeah so I guess um going back to my younger younger days um (laughs) I didn't realize probably at the time of how much it was shaping me to be who I am today. Mm. Um, And I say that I was very good at protecting myself, suppressing thoughts and feelings um, and all of those things from, from a very early age. And I guess it's what created my persona and who I am. And it started off at a, at a young age, um, dealing with sexual abuse from a next door neighbor. Um, and I didn't think, you know, I, I was very fortunate. It wasn't as bad as what other people had had. And so I always would tell myself I was fortunate that it wasn't that bad, but regardless of how bad or, or not bad it is, it's, mm. it's still something that shouldn't happen to a young child against their choice. Yeah. And it still shapes who you are. Um, and I'm only starting to, you know, I guess uncover a lot more of that as I go, grow older. And I guess through through my teenage years, it got to a point where I guess I didn't feel like I fitted in. I didn't feel like I belonged. Mm-hmm. There were times where I was suicidal and I just didn't feel like anyone would care whether I was walking the earth or not anymore, apart from maybe my parents mm-hmm. or that anyone would even notice or come to my funeral and they were the thoughts that I had. So I'm really passionate around mental health to this day because of having dealt with my own battles in those areas. And thankfully now I have got so many tools in my toolkit that I don't ever really go back into that space. And if I do, it's so short. I can get myself out of it quickly. Um, and I'm in communication a lot more about it as well. So um So, yeah, so I guess I kind of dealt with that um, through my teenage years and um, it really created all all those experiences up until that day really created me to be this strong and independent woman. Like I didn't need anybody else and I could do things on my own because I was this strong woman. 
and this strong person. And whilst that served me really well in many respects, especially working in male-dominated industries, at the same time, it didn't serve me as well. I travelled the world for 12 months pretty much by myself. I met friends along the way. I, um, you know, met people along the way that I travelled with as well. And I just knew myself to just have to rely upon myself. That was the only thing that I ever needed. Then I came back from my travelling and my friendship circles had completely changed. Um, The dynamics and people had become friends that weren't so close before and I I didn't feel like I belonged and fitted in again. And I guess that's where I started to hit rock bottom again. Mm -hmm. And at that point I realised I needed to speak to somebody. I I guess I started the the parts of those healing journeys that will kind of go into a little bit more But that's where I started to talk to a psychologist where I'd never really, I'd seen them maybe once before, but didn't get value. And that kind of started me to kind of work on myself, heal some of those parts of me, um, learn to accept that it wasn't my fault for feeling those feelings as well um, from earlier on. And I started to go and explore personal development. I really love that. And I'm constantly growing and learning myself learning more about myself and developing myself all the time. Went into corporate, um, had worked there for most of my career up until last year when I went through an unfair dismissal with my employer and I was dealing with my second miscarriage in six months. I had to have two surgeries. I was facing a third. That's a lot. Mm. All And my husband was made redundant and so there was a lot that happened in a very short period of time. And the thing that I realised through that is that unlike many other people who would have been faced with those challenges, I was not in the fetal position on the floor. (laughs) I was able to move through those times powerfully and I thrived. And so that really helped I guess, gave me that sign from the universe, well, what do I do? Do I go back into corporate in the middle of a global pandemic as they started to rehire or do I follow my passion and start my own business? And I decided to follow the ladder and start my own business. (laughs) Yay. um, Yeah, I'm really passionate about helping other women and men as well. I do work with some men, but predominantly women, um, really help to create that full body wellness, help support their journeys and share the tools that have made a difference to me with other people. So beautiful. Yay. And it's it's funny, you can be at that turning point and it's like that, do I go left down that way or do I trust my gut and my intuition and go that way? And every single time when you trust your intuition, your gut, it works out exactly how it's meant to be. And it's you're, you know you're always looked after and it's perfect. It's such a beautiful, but it takes that moment where you go, oh, 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 do I or don't I? You know, do I go do the norm and the way that we're taught and go the old way of paradigms, the way of doing things, or do I just go, hell, I'm going this way? <laughs> so well done for doing that. It must have been a big decision. How was your husband around that? Was he is he very open and and to to what it was he like? Oh, I don't know, you know, because a lot of men put on the logical mind where women, you know, are really more open, especially if they're, they're in their feminine energy when men are in their masculine. Was he quite like, oh, yeah, no, this is good, let's do this? Yeah, I'm I'm very fortunate for my husband and very grateful for him. So he's probably more the dreamer than I am. And wow. they're almost, I say sometimes he's probably more connected to his feminine energy that I have been at, at least up until more recently mm-hmm. um, because I've had you know, that strong, independent woman, more masculine energy. I was at the peak of my career working in corporate and senior management. So for me, it's been very natural to be in my masculine energy and be more logical thinking. So for for me, doing that last year was more out of my comfort zone and more he would not He's great. He's very supportive. And he's like, yeah, amazing. I mean, he started his own business when he had the redundancy as well. So we were both starting our businesses together. And there is crossover between what we do as well. Um, And more so over time as we're writing a book together. 
Um, but there are challenges when you've got two different people coming together to create the one thing as well. Yeah. So I've been there. Really- <laughs> and I'm about to go there again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell us about when you started moving out of the space, when you, you said you hit the second rock bottom and, and you were like, Oh God, I've I, I've got to do something. I've got to do something. What what actually? What was the impact? That was there a pivotal moment or an epiphany or a moment where you just went, I have to do it, or was it just a oh goodness? And how did you actually take that step? Because a lot of people sit there, and I know you said that you already had a lot of stuff before that you in a toolbox and everything. But what was the the next step that you went? I have to do this a different way. Like everything else isn't working, and I have to really go all in. Was that the first or the second here? Probably the first time, wasn't it? More yeah, so. Look, I mean, probably when I was younger, I didn't really, I didn't really know about other other solutions. I mean, I knew the obvious solutions. Yeah. Or go speak to a therapist, and that didn't really work. For hours and hours and hours. <laughs> no disrespect to them, but still. I think there are so many different therapists and types of therapy out there to begin with. And it's about really finding the therapist that you connect with as well. And it's the same with different healing, healing modalities as well. I always say you've got to find the right thing that works for you. And so if you don't find it the first time, it's not about giving up then it's about keeping, keep going until you find the thing that does work for you. So I guess in the first time, I probably didn't realize that there were so many options available to me I just knew a few of the obvious ones and they didn't really appeal to me so I didn't really do anything so much and I guess I probably relied a lot more on myself and just my self-talk in that moment to get me through and whilst that was helpful it would only get me so far and so I guess the second time around when my life felt like it was crashing around me again I guess that's when I was like okay Maybe I have to go and do something that Different. on the surface I don't really want to do, but maybe it's going to be the best thing for me. Mm. And I think it's as time goes on, you start to transform and you start to heal in the process. And then you're more open to receiving other things. And it's kind of like that phrase where when the student's ready, the teacher will, will yeah, come. I love and that I think, saying. It's a, so that true. Is, And I think that's the same with whatever you need in that moment in terms of, you know, other modalities. You know, when I started to transform, other things would show up and it was the next thing and the next thing. And I started to realize I really love personal development. I love growing myself. I love learning new things. I love health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And as time goes on, I start exploring. I used to be never somebody who was into anything woo-woo and thought it was a little crazy and as time goes on I mean I think there are still things that are a bit woo-woo for me but there's a lot more in that space that I take on now that I never worked before and I think I think it really you hit it on the head it's being open it's being open to receive what's actually being shown to you because we get shown especially now so many different things just come especially through the internet oh my god it's like it's so noisy out there and then when you're when you're in that seeking for someone to actually heal and help you and and to, to mentor and stand with you it's really hard to to see through all the noise and of course, and you touched on it as well, when we're in our masculine, we're in our mind. So we're not in it, we're not feeling it from, from our heart center, from the nurture, from the lover of the feminine energy. So it can get really freaking noisy. And how did you know what you picked was the right thing for you? How did you know that this was, was it, what was it that, that like, oh my God, I've got to do that. I just got to do that no matter what. I don't know if you, you, ever 100% know in the moment that you're making the decisions all the time. Um, Sometimes it's just trust and faith. Um, If it sounded good or it sounded interesting or it felt like it was the right thing, Mm. I would explore it. Yeah. Um, And it kind of just led from there, I guess. And I think just something that you touched on a moment ago is around, you know, the person that's going to help heal you. And I really think what I've learned more over time and more recently it's not somebody else who's doing the healing for yeah. you. It's you doing your own healing on yourself 100%. with 
support and the guidance of those around you who have maybe been there and done that before or they've held that space or they know what to expect but Mm. it's you doing the work on you and you have to be ready for it so you either want to stay in the thick of wherever you're at or you want to get to somewhere get to the better side so to speak and yeah and that's my biggest thing that I actually, I do teach is that you heal yourself. You're your own healer. If anyone says to you, I can heal you. No, you're there. That may be the channel, but, and they hold the space, but you actually heal yourself, which is such a big thing because I think we, you know, especially with, with the way that we are with the media and with everything is that we're in the way that we are programmed is to go looking for someone for the answers that you need to heal yourself. And you touched on it right at the start when you said, you know, I started being, I started like tuning into myself and being the observer and, and seeing what I needed and started healing. And then I think we go through a transitional period. This is for me when I did it. I went through a transitional period, you know, I did hypnotherapy, I did the psychology of that. And I was like, there's, there's something else. There's just something else I need to do. There's just something else I feel in my gut that I have to actually start to embody. And I didn't know what that was. And then when it's almost like you put it out and it absolutely shows up, as you said, you know, the, the teacher appears. So it's so beautiful. So what are some of the different modalities that you've done? What have, how have what different things that you've actually done yourself to get through on your, your healing journey? Yeah. So... I guess let's start a couple of years back, which really I've never been as confronted then as I have now. That was a lot. Uh, (sighs) And now it's a lot better and I've been getting signs to tap back more into it. So, um, well, first of all, I guess I started about four and a half years ago using the Young Living Essential Oils and um, they have been powerful for me in terms of just supporting my mental health, my emotional health, even physically and my spiritual connection to source. Um, So they've been incredible and they're always a part of my journey before I hopped on. I'm like, cool, what can I have? I did my grounding. (laughs) So they've been one of the things. And again, I knew nothing about oils. I had no idea the power of them, the benefits, nothing. Um, but they have kind of been one of the open, you know, channels that's opened up a whole lot of others for me. Mm-hmm. And then through that, I met some people who were, who were theta healers. So I learned theta healing a few years ago, which was super confronting. Yeah. Um, and I overthought it. So I actually blocked myself um, ah. through, through the course. I was crying um, and I was like, no, 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 can't do this. And it's only now recently where I'm starting to tap a little bit more back into to that. And I guess I kind of bring that into my sessions with clients a little bit as well without saying it's a thing of healing or anything. Yeah. Um, and then last We're always year, scared I- of our power. We're not scared of how inadequate we are. It's like, whoa, this is yeah. big. Hang on a minute. I don't know if I'm ready for this. Is it funny how you came back to it? It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, mean, I incorporate some technology in some um, my business and it tells you some of the services and treatments that are going to help benefit bringing you back into balance. And so uh, the last number of scans that I've been doing has been coming up with beta healing and I was like, all right, I got it. All right, I get it. <laughs> I get it, I get it. All right. <laughs> Get off my back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so that's been like one of the ones in the that I learned a few years ago, but it's yeah. kind of coming back now a little bit to myself because I've done some other work now. Yeah. Um, but so you're ready to embody it. I think things that, that yeah. you can you can find out something and it can come back into your field a few times, but when you're ready to really take ownership of it, embody it and use it in your work to help others that's when you just know, you just like, okay, <laughs> I've resisted this for so long, I'm there. Yeah. Exactly. So I did that a few years ago. And then uh, last year I completed my women's circle facilitation training while I was out of work and deciding what I was going to do. So I now hold women's circles at the moment. I've got some, I've got one that next week starting, um, that's an online circle. So I'm kind of looking, doing that um, at the moment. Um, so I guess, you know, holding space for other women as much as I'm doing the, so the, the work to 
them, they're also helping me at the same time. Um, and then last year, I also studied raindrop technique, massage. Um, That's the one I want to know about, the raindrop technique. <laughs> you know what? I read your, and I was like, what's that? That sounds cool. I've never heard of that. Can you it's explain so more on that one? <laughs> it's so, so good. So essentially, um, we start with somebody lying on their back. And we're using essential oils through the, the treatment. So the first oil we use is a blend and it's called Valor. And whilst it's really great for courage and confidence, it's, it's a grounding oil. So it really grounds and centers the, the person into the session and helps them to relax. Mm -hmm. But it also connects my energy with their energy as well. So we start by relaxing them into the session and then I'm doing Tibetan reflexology on the feet, which is a bit more gentle than modern reflexology. And we're working the points on the feet that correspond to the reflex points of the spine. Powerful. Very powerful. And then, and then the person will turn onto their stomach and then essential oils are applied from a height onto the back. Mm -hmm. So it feels like raindrops are falling onto you. Ooh. Hence, very good. <laughs> And then they are just very lightly um, feathered onto the, like fanned onto the body. Um, so it's all very soft and gentle. Mm. It's massaged in using different techniques. Um, so it's more of a soft and gentle kind of approach of a massage compared to your traditional remedial Swedish massages. And what makes that unique as well is we're, we're not so used to that soft and gentle touch anymore. And so that really, for some people, is really supportive of what they need because they're so, again, if you're in your masculine energy compared to your feminine energy, sometimes you need that softness at, um, coming back into your that body. You. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, again, you've got the essential oils that are being um in the room aromatically that you're breathing in as well as topically being absorbed. All the senses are alive. <laughs> Yummy. And that soft touch, it's, you know, kind of bringing to life. We're moving the energy out of the body as well. <clears throat> so we're moving the energy out of the body. So do you um, get a lot of, um, would you be moving a lot of trapped like, would you also be doing the trauma work when you're moving the energy out of the body or is it just the surface energy and the aura and the actual um, basis of it? Yeah, so when we're applying the oils from a height, we're applying the oils. It's going through that aura energy that you're talking about. So we don't apply it from too high a height because, right. again, there could be so many other energy interactions going on in the field that yeah. the person it won't impact them yeah. so we try and keep it a little bit closer so they we're going to help with the auric energy Love it. Um, and look it's a bit of it's a bit of both so what will happen over time when someone first comes to see me for a treatment mm. ideally and not everyone sticks to the plan and you know life gets in the way yeah but ideally, what we say to people is to come and get a session once a week for the first yeah. four weeks. And yeah, because you're just feeling, you're just removing the basis of it and then you start getting, because the body will only allow what the body needs to do in that moment. It'll do what it needs, isn't it? Because they're healing themselves. Yeah. Do you get them to Absolutely. set the tensions as well with it? Sorry, what was that? Do you get them to set the tensions within their body? Yeah, so the clients will complete paperwork beforehand Beautiful. And I guess this is where I kind of sometimes bring some of that theta work into it as well. Yeah. And we ask them, what do they want to achieve from the session? What's their intention? Mm. And so I feel like my job is to hold that space and hold that intention for them. And so when I'm doing the valid balance through the treatment and even through the end, when I'm, you know, doing my gratitude at the end of the treatment, yeah. I am you know, I'm connecting to source creator and mm -hmm. I'm saying, you know, creator, um, please, you know, help Lisa to feel calm and relaxed and grounded and feel amazing. Yeah, and beautiful. All of it. And so I'm bringing that throughout the treatment as yeah. well as whatever they are. So depending upon how intuitive and how connected someone might be, yeah. they can have quite vivid experiences on the table. Mm. Um, 
as you said, the first four, four weeks, we're really just kind of starting to shift some of the basic mm-hmm. stuff and energy yeah. in the body. Yeah. Then we stay to kind of come once a fortnight. And then after that, it's kind of, kind of once a month. There's a bit of a maintenance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we've been, I've been in Sydney and we've been in lockdown the last few months yeah. and I've only just started to see. Oh, you've been able to do it. Your energy hands must be going crazy. <laughs> Your husband getting lots of massages. <laughs> what are you meaning? <laughs> but it's been nice. It's been nice to have that break because I think sometimes you, you need to have that break as well to come back renewed and revitalised yeah. and yeah. Recharge. You know, bring your next level as well. Mm. And so I've just seen a couple of clients already this week returning back and because they've not been for several months, it, you know, there's and there's been a lot of stuff in the world going on as well. They really felt the effects yeah. of the treatment yeah, almost they like they had in the first session. And so that's why we always say it's good to kind of keep them closer to start with and move them out yeah. as time goes because yeah. that's when you get to dig deeper. Yeah. We do yeah. have traditional oils that we use in the treatments. But then, as you said, um, we can swap some of the oils out if we need to provide a more emotional raindrop technique yeah. or if someone comes to me or through their scans that I might do, they've got some wellness goals or some health areas mm-hmm. that they want to work on, we might swap out some of the oils to help support those parts of their body or their mind. So we have the flexibility as practitioners to kind of connect in. And sometimes it's also, you know, asking the client, you know, intuitively if there's something there that they might pick an oil or draw a card and see what yeah, that's, that's so so cool. it's always those options available but obviously there's the traditional oils and the traditional t- technique that we yeah. would do and yeah. I generally start with that yeah. then we can either add hot stones in at the end of a treatment or do a hot stone treatment separately yeah so that that's just going to add a whole nother deeper layer of, of relaxation which is beautiful mm. um and i do also chakra energy balancing work as well yeah um so as i become through this work <clears throat> become more connected then i've been able to tap into my higher yeah. self and that's stuff. what happens your gifts just get start expanding more and more and more easy. especially when you're massaging you're using your hands as healing so it's just so tell me what is the what is the Thank you for sharing all that. I was really, I love that. I was really good. When I'm in Sydney, I'm coming to have a session, by the way. <laughs> um, but you can't do them on Zoom, right? It's like, ah. Um, well, I, I can teach people how to do it from their own yeah. home cool. for friends and family. Yeah. So that's one option if yeah. you're in a lockdown situation. And you there you go. You can get a little bit of juiciness. <laughs> you can get some of it. But it's never the same. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's not you. See, it's not you're the heal, healing them. Um, what is the the modality that the best, the, 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 the most powerful modality you've used in your healing journey? Not necessarily one that you teach, but one that had the biggest impact for you, um, maybe around your sexual trauma or around, you know, just, just the miscarriages or just in the early years before you started on this journey of realizing that, oh, goodness, I'm supposed to teach what I do. Hello, my soul work. Yay. What was what was the most powerful modality you had when you started coming out of that? what I call that really fucked up craziness, you know, like, oh, my God, what the hell is going on? I need to, to, to find myself. For me, for me, I think that it really started with working on my mindset. Mm-hmm. Simple as that, could, right? And exactly. Before yeah. I could, and, and I think, you know, <clears throat> when we're talking about, and it's funny, my throat chakra. I was going to say, your throat chakra is having fun. <laughs> I'm not clearing it for you. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I, I think it's really the mindset that that really helped kick yeah. things off for me because in order for me to cope from a young age, I would tell myself stories 
which again, were helpful back then, but it gets to a certain point where they're no longer helpful yeah. and they can be detrimental and do the reverse. So for me, I think it started with getting into the personal development fields and starting to work on the mindset and really look at the stories that I had been telling myself and, and then starting to create what I wanted for my life. Mm-hmm. Over time, that led to the other modalities, meditation and all of those things in time. But it was, it was almost for me, I couldn't get to that space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Until yeah. I found the, the mind work. It's key. It's absolute key. And it's exactly how I started. It was exactly, I found myself a mindset coach and she was phenomenal. And that's when I realized, and it had that huge flow on effects when I realized that when you start understanding your patterns, your beliefs, your you know, limiting beliefs, and then you start hearing yourself telling stories and you realize your worthiness. And then, then it just, it opens up this whole big, oh my God, I'm a victim and that's okay. Okay, so let's go into that and you can become the observer of your life. Such key, being the observer of your life. And you talked about um, you talked about forgiveness. Like for, for me, there was a lot of forgiveness on myself um, for the abuse I gave myself. And I know you teach a lot of self-care as well. So, yeah. you know, and then you roll into the self-love and then off you go and you, and you, and you, and then at the, the end part of it, you're like, well, we're not the end, but we're like in the same sort of area going, oh my God, this healing stuff is so powerful. But you wouldn't be where you are now if you hadn't gone back to that. And I call it the basics, but it's the it's the messy part. It's the part where you're just unraveling all the stuff. So yeah. how long did you feel before you actually started coming into your own? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, look, I think it, for me it started several years ago, yeah. but it's almost it's always evolving so it's like oh but am I is it me coming into my own now or now who am I so, now who am I now new exactly. identity how many times you change your wardrobe new identity great now I'm gonna change my wardrobe great thanks exactly. <laughs> I don't like it anymore <laughs> it's always evolving and I think yeah. now that I'm really getting a sense and understanding around the balance between that masculine and that feminine energy, I think that's where it started to shift a whole nother level again. Mm. And for me, you know, going back to something that you touched on earlier, for me, I'm very fortunate. My husband's mum, so my mother-in-law, mm. I, I, I think he married his mother, but... <laughs> they always do. <laughs> It's it's freaky. Well, first of all, we're born on the same day, so that that oh um, my god, it's very aligned. <laughs> but yeah, I was very fortunate. So he grew up with a mother who was very open to this oh. side and spiritual side, and it was very connected in many ways. Oh, you know, it's um, so beautiful. Thank you, bastard. <laughs> yeah. So he had that part of it easy. So when yeah. you asked him, you know, how was he about you starting your own business, he's like, yeah, go for it. Because he was a lot more connected to that side and already, whereas mm-hmm. for me, I wasn't. So, yeah, that. He's your rock. Ah, uh, yeah. So beautiful. And vice versa, we, you know, the yin and yang, we balance yeah. each other out. Yeah, yeah. The biological side and things, that's more natural yeah. for me at times. But, it, again, even... You know, I had a healing exchange with a friend last week and it was really interesting with what he was sharing and who who I'm evolving and will be working with as I continue to grow. Mm. And he was saying, you think your logical side is your natural flow, but it's actually not. And I was like, oh, I, I can't. I traveled the world for 12 months and there were times where on the whim of a moment, I was like, I'm going to stay here an extra night. Or I would turn up into a city and I had no idea where I was going to sleep that night. And I think back to those days and I'm like, oh, my God, who was that person? Who the hell was that? How did I do that? (laughs) Completely my feminine flow, just going with whatever felt good at the time and just enjoying it. Mm. And to have... And, and it was a man who was doing healing work with me. And it was interesting to have another person and a man say, that's your natural flow. And it's like, oh. 
wow, what could life be like if I just completely went with that all the time and didn't be so structured? Mm -hmm. with my Great lifestyle? question. Yeah. yeah. So it's always evolving. I think it's yeah. as you evolve, all of the healing modalities kick in another level and, and help support you. And your clients you. evolve and it's just, just this whole just spiral effect to everybody around you, everyone that you're teaching. And I know that for me, like I went on a three-month healing journey not so long ago and in that time everything was quite stagnant. And then when I came out the other side, like I did ayahuasca, I did um, a, a two-week detoura with the plant medicine. I really got into plant medicine. And that was when, before that, I chipped into my feminine masculine and that was when I really connected to my higher self. So I'm going through my evolution right now is my higher self connection and just the power of it. Um, so yeah, we are, and then you know, then I'll come back and I'll do some my some shaka work. I'll come back and do this work and this. You seem to flow as you need to flow, and when you when you are carefree, when you are living in the moment, when you're doing what feels good, it just it just happens. It's like oh well, and living in the present moment. Oh my god, because you know when you're masculine, you always worry about what's happened there, what happened there, what's going on there. So it's such a it's such a beautiful difference to be present with yourself. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's also that the meditation. So I remember speaking to somebody who's, who was a theta healer as well. And I was like, oh, so how did you get into that? How do you do that? What, what do you do? And, and I remember her telling me at the time, yeah, you've got to meditate more because when you meditate and you're clearing out that noise, mm. you're able to then, as you said, connect more to your soul, <laughs> your highest self and everything. Yeah. And listen, because uh, <laughs> we hear it, but we're like, yeah, no, this is better. I'm used to this. this. is my programming. This is my story. I'm going over here. <laughs> we're human beings. So we think that answer needs to be way more complicated and we complicate things. And it's like, no, simple. Yes. You need to keep yourself in silence. That's it. And when you do that, you'll be able to connect to your intuition. You'll be able to connect to source. You'll be able to feel what yeah. feels good for you. Yeah. Um, and that's. That's the hardest is to get into the silence because people don't like silence. They're not used to silence. When I did that two-week dieta I talked about, I sat and stared at a, wheel, a, a wall for two weeks. Mm. Oh, my God, the first part of it was so fucking uncomfortable. I was kicking and screaming and rah inside. And then it, it was just bliss. Mm. I didn't want to come out. <laughs> and you okay. connected. So and you can relate that to a whole range of things, just that one experience that you've shared. Mm. For me, like I've been, like I'm a Pisces, I love the water. <clears throat> and apart from yesterday, I've been in the water every day for like 14 consecutive days. I went in the water this morning and I went into the ocean and it's spring and it's cold. We're not in Queensland where oh, it's you're crazy. And it was overcast this morning. It's beautiful now. Um, but getting into the ocean, you know, that first moment when you get in the water and it's freezing cold Ugh. and your body is like, what are you doing? And you're shaking and you're shivering. You've got the goosebumps going through your body and you want to get out because you think it's crazy. But the longer that you stay in there, your body relaxes and you calm down and you feel great. And then you get out and you're like, oh, my God, this is freezing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually more, more in water. But yeah. so many experiences like that, that it's natural when we go into something new or we yeah. go into something that's uncomfortable, it's always that moment where we freak out, we go into a spin, but if you can just be with it and sit with whatever's coming up for you, mm. that's when mm. the magic happens. Mm. I love that. That's so true. Okay, well, thank you so much. I just want to ask you as a last question, what bit of advice would you like to give the people that are listening around anything, anything that just pops to your mind? What, what bit of advice would you like to give them to where they are now if they're wanting to move to where they want to go? Well, the first thing is, is that they matter, mm. that they're loved. Mm. And so that's the first thing. Yeah. And but they have so much value to share and to trust themselves and to do what feels right for them and just go on the journey and explore. And if they don't find what works, it's being persistent and keep going until you find the thing that makes the difference because it's out there. You've just got to find it. 
and if that. you can't connect or find that one thing and in, and it's probably also just trusting that if you found something and it doesn't feel like it's the thing potentially it still is and you're just resisting it based on what we just talked about <laughs> so true and you may come full circle and come back to it again yes <laughs> okay all right then <laughs> so stop <laughs> fighting in other words i love that that was awesome <laughs> I love how I segued to what you were talking about. Brilliant. <laughs> See, we're a soul having a human experience. It's fun. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing and coming on um, the Art of Quantum Healing podcast. Uh, it's just been beautiful having you. Thank you for sharing that intimate tough part about you and helping so many people with what you do and i guarantee there's like little aha moments all going on right now so thank you for being a part of this beautiful uh, journey with me as well thank you for having me you're welcome and i look forward to possibly having you again and we'll be talking about your next part of your expansion <laughs> sounds amazing yeah awesome thank you beautiful yeah. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. Make sure to check out all the show notes of today's episode on my website by clicking on the link in the description. Also, make sure to join my newsletter to receive a free guided meditation to help you feel grounded throughout your day. Finally, make sure to subscribe to my channel and help us grow the community by sharing it with your friends. I am your host, Lisa Nadler, and this is the Art of Quantum Healing.